Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and staying healthy. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you about all the things that I wish I knew before I started studying actuarial science. For those who are new here, my name is Vinikai and I am a full-time actuarial professional. I'm studying to become an actuary. I post videos about actuarial life, actuarial studies, postpartum and pregnancy, hair and just general things that I find interesting in my life. If you're interested in watching more of that, then please click the subscribe button below. I would really appreciate it if you did. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into this video. So the first thing that I regret is that I didn't know that getting an actuarial degree is not the same as being an actuary. You're simply that, a person with a degree. For you to actually become an actuary, you need to write a series of exams. They used to be 15 in the past, now they've come down to 13. And the main body that people write exams with the world over is the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. But South Africa actually started offering their own exams from 2010. Their actual intention is to offer the full set of exams themselves. At the moment, they're still doing part of the exams with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries and part of the exams with the Actuarial Society of South Africa. So in my mind, actuarial science was the smarter choice over medicine, which was my other option. And in that, I was thinking that it would take fewer years because it was just a degree and I was done. It actually doesn't work that way. With the board exams, I've actually gotten to 10 years now because I started my undergrad in 2011. My second point is actually really linked to my first point. And that's because since I didn't know about the board exams, I also didn't realize the importance of exemptions when I was in university. So the university that I went to offered exemptions from nine of the exams in your undergrad degree. And then when you went on to honors, it offered you an extra three exemptions. So if you played your cards right, you could have left university with 12 exams in total. But the catch is that they throw in some courses to distract you. For me, it was maths, economics, and accounting. I really loved those because I was so good at them. And the sad part is that good just wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to be amazing in those subjects. So I worked extra hard and I got certificates of first class in most of my math courses in second year. There were actually four exemptions in actuarial science and statistics. And I missed those because I was too busy focusing on the other shiny toys that they had thrown in to distract me. Because actuarial science and statistics were so hard, I always just did enough to get through the year. I never went the extra mile. I never tried to be the best. So my advice to you right now is it's very important to get into a university that offers you the maximum number of exemptions. And once you're in there, your one and only focus should be getting those exemptions. I don't care if you're not going to get an A++ in accounting and in economics. Just get the minimum mark that's going to get you the exemption for those subjects and you're done. No more. Don't even fool yourself that you're going to play catch up later in life. It is so much harder to write exams when you're working. Trust me, it's so easy when you're a student. It's the only thing that's expected of you. And life will start to get in the way when you're working. So take my advice and get your exemptions. Another thing that I didn't know was that university was no different from high school. I thought that being the best in the class, top of the class, was not important at all. I thought like all degrees were equal in the same way all animals are equal. It turned out all degrees are equal, like animal farm kind of equal. They're not equal. They're those who are the best and really amazing. And then they're the average students who just get average degrees. It's actually really embarrassing that I didn't know this until about the middle of third year. But then if you take anything from me today, it's that you need to work as hard as you can to be as good as you can. If possible, be the best. If not possible, fight to be in the top 10. Companies are going to be clamoring to hire you and you have nothing to worry about if you make sure that your academic record is the best there is. If your university offers an honors degree with exemptions, you have to do your best to fight to be in that class. I didn't know that. When I actually started university, I had no aspirations to go on to post-grad. I just wanted to do my undergrad and be done with it and then I'd be an actuary and be super rich and then I'd never have to study again a day in my life. 
but unfortunately things didn't work out that way and if I could go back to the younger me I would tell them that honors is where you should be aiming to be. Well anyway, along the way I found out that if you had four exemptions you could go on to honors and that was like the general rule that they had used for many years and it had always worked. So being the person that I was and with the kind of attitude that I had towards university, I just decided to get my four exemptions and be done with it. And at the end of undergrad, when they were picking the people to go on to honors, I was left off the list. And that's because in that year, there were more than 45 people who got at least four exemptions. And the honors class was exactly 45 seats. So they didn't need any extra people. Then they started trimming off. And the criteria that they used was all the useless exemptions must just leave the room. And because I had focused on getting my accounting and economics and stats exemptions, I didn't make the cut to go on to honors. So I was left out. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you're planning to study actuarial science, this video has helped you to get a clearer perspective of what studying actuarial science actually involves. On the right here, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. On the left here, you can watch another one of my videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!